everybody, to the book club episode of Adeptus Ridiculous. My name is Bricky, my co-host is DK, and we're going to be discussing the wonderful works of the Black Library. But before we start, if you are interested and enjoy this podcast, go down to patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous. DK is going to be teaching me about fantasy if we hit the big two zero. Zero, zero, zero. Oh my God! It's hap. It might be happening. It might be happening. He, we, we will, we will do. A, we will finally do a lovely episode on the fantasy world. DK will take the reins, and uh, that is going to be our our next uh, mm. our next major Patreon goal with the big twenty k, which has been insanity that we're even getting close to that. So thank yeah, you very wild. much. Um, and again, to than- reiterate, one off. It's it's going to be one episode. So just to be crystal clear well, the uh, about arrives what on you April are 1st. signing up for. Yeah, yeah. Whether it arrives on April 1st, who knows? Who knows? Yeah, the we'll see. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see. Uh, besides that, if you'd like to check out any of the merchandise, check out Orchidate.com. It is in the description. We have a brand new, extremely, as DK would say, yoked AF corn demon gal. There is also a sexy fulgrim and or snaky, fulgur, whatever. And you also have the new flag, which is a lot of fun if you'd like to fly it high for memes. That flag is so cool. We keep getting pictures of people, like, waving that flag and showing where they put it up. Oh, that that's a... Man, that was a great idea to put that up. Oh, so I love it. It's good times. But mm. also, YouTube CEO... Is stepping down, and I must say, I always thought her name was Susan Wojak. It is not. <laughs> it's not, but I always called her Susan Wojak too. The hell yeah! All right, we're on the same page. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think they're replacing her with anyone good though. Any? Duh, it's you two. What did you expect? A solid decision? I think the new guy is like big into NFTs and stuff. Oh no. I know, dude. Oh, I no. know. <laughs> All uh, right. Let's you know let's... who <laughs> would also. No, actually, would would Call be into NFTs? Uh, no. I think Call would think NFTs were too pedestrian. Right? Yeah, and yeah. I think you'd be he, right. He would scoff at it and and think it was just a stupid idea for stupid lowbrow people. And yeah, I don't think Call would be into it. See, see, he would think ahead. He would be like, "No, NFTs are dumb. I am the token." He would he would turn you into a fungible token that he, he could trade for whatever. Extremely fungible. Yeah, you are so fungible. So our the books book are for fungible today because they're you know fungus. Our fungible. books for today is Shai says Rabute. I invented a new advanced form of currency. Firstborn dollars is obsolete. Invest into FTX. Oh no! Yeah, Rabute would do that. A new taxable source of uh, income. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but but no, Rabute's too smart. He would like, <laughs> he would realize that NFTs are a scam. Mm. And he's like, this doesn't help the Imperium at all. Get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Our book, Belisarius Call the Great Work, a mm-hmm. heavily requested book. Um, oh, quite, I... quite requested. Yeah, actually, it, it, people were asking for Belisarius Call for a while. Oh, I, um, I guess I didn't realize that. I mean, I, I had heard of Belisarius Call the Great Works, but I, I guess I somehow missed that a lot of people were requesting it. Yeah, it was a, a hyperly requested book out there. Okay. Um, along with, like, Hell's Reach and stuff, but... Oh, yeah, Hell's um, Reach has been very requested. requested. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and so, uh, it's about a 10, 11-hour book, give or take. Pretty, mm-hmm. pretty hefty. Not quite, like, first heretic hefty, but it's pretty long. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and uh, DK... What are your yeah. thoughts? Oh, it's it's a mixed bag because we we were talking about it and it's it's a good book, right? But it is it's it's kind of confusing. There is so much shifting between present and past of like call and stuff that and and like. I don't know if it would have been easier to read. We were talking about it's like maybe if you were reading it, it wouldn't have felt maybe as jarring as it did. But in audiobook format, it was like, whoa, did I skip 
like two chapters where are we what's going on how did we go from the tyranid torn planet to a totally normal place and why is called prisoner what happened what's so it, it it's a confusing book but there are so many big call reveals and there's so much like good lore when it gets going that it kind of evens out i think it was a really good book right i think it was solid i think it depends on what we're talking about i we discussed this a bit ago uh we mm -hmm. both kind of agree that the audiobook form is probably not the best way to listen slash read to this book yeah um, because it's simply, uh, it's very hard to parse between, because sometimes he'll say just like, now, and I'm like, it took me a bit to realize like, oh, we're in the present now. That's what he means by now. Yeah. Cause I'm not, I'm not yeah. seeing it in a big, bold, um, paragraph cutting thing. Yeah. Yeah. Text in like a book that, that, that splits chapters. Yeah. It's not like a page break or anything. It's just, it goes right into it from whatever they were doing before. Yeah, and the guy's just like, bang, five million times, and then just says, now, <laughs> bang. And then bang, I'm like, bang. oh, we're back to now again. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it definitely took a little bit to uh, figure that out. Um, yeah, it takes getting used to it. It's weird. Like, at first, like I said, it's like, did I? I don't think I hit the skip button. And then after a while, you're like, oh, that these are, these are like tense shifts. Oh, and then, like, you know halfway into the book it's like okay now i I'm, I'm into the flow i get it and it's a little easier to, to digest but it's a little jarring at first yeah it, it took about about halfway give or take um right to about when the gene stealers come out of the, the walls or like <laughs> the necrons start coming around the, the yep. scarabs mm -hmm. that's just about when I, was, I started to actually get into the book pretty <clears> well Oh, yeah, because um, that's when the tent shifts kind of, they simmer down a little bit. Like, there's still some, but there's not as many of those, like, really big breaks. Yeah, it was, the rest <clears throat> of the stuff was all just kind of setting up. Yeah. Um, it, it was interesting. So, like, most of the time, I I cared really only about two characters, and that was Call and Felix. Ah, uh, okay. Um, those were really the only characters I much I much gave a shit about. I mean, they you had... didn't care about the plight of the Emperor Scythe and and him trying to regain his chapter's honor after um, all of the uh, after being betrayed by one of their own who was a uh, gene stealer cult. Um, what was his name like? Like Tarion or like? You know, I gotta be honest. Like the last couple days, I've been racking my brain trying to remember what his name was. But I read the book like a month ago, and I cannot for the life of me remember what his name was. The problem is, is that with the exception of Felix, all the marine names just blend for me. Yeah. It's like there's like the, the warps or the, the warp smith. I've been playing too much chaos. The tech <laughs> marine, which is like Ty Tyranar or something. And then like yeah. and then the, the Emperor Size survivor, which is like. Ty uh, Tyrion or something, and then you've got the Apothecary, which is like y Yamin, I think. Yeah, in my head, they were just the Emperor's sides, and I remember the stuff they did, but I don't remember their names or any defining traits. Just that they were betrayed by, like, they thought it was one person, and it's like, oh, no, you're wrong, it wasn't them, it was this other person you never suspected. And that's yeah, all like, I remember. It's great shame for us, and that's why we have these, like, psychic things in our armor to stop the Steelers. And Yep. Yep, all that yep, stuff. Yep. Um, no, I didn't really give a shit about that. <laughs> I don't know if you were. I don't know if you were being sarcastic when you said that. No, well, I I kind of did because like I wanted because like the Emperor's size sound really cool, and I was like, oh, this is kind of neat. And there's obviously some big mystery that like he knows more than he's saying, and he's keeping it very under wraps. And I was like, what's what's the secret? What's the big deal? And so I I kind of cared. See, but again, the, like you said, secrets. it was mostly about Call. It was mostly right. about what's going on with Call, what's going on with this crazy mountain, uh, and is Decimus gonna die? Yeah, well, yeah, is Decimus gonna die? Type things. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I think the problem is that the reveal of of the size of the Emperor is so like, it's just kind of mundane. It's like an it's like a twist, really. Yeah. It's, it's just them like being shameful, be, right? Yeah, yeah. I expected like something much worse. Um, but like when I 
I liked the dynamic between De- him being named Decimus threw me off at the beginning because I was thinking of the Night Lord books. <laughs> yeah, the Night Lord kid. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, but like Felix is uh, his name. The one of the very early Primaris Marines. Like, what was it like six thousand years ago? So like thirty four thousand. Yeah, something um, like that. Carl's been working at this for a while. A good while. Yep, all of his sons. Um, but like, I liked the the dynamic between Call and uh, Felix because Felix was uh, horribly tortured as a as like an eight year old boy. Oh yeah. Um, just like, and, and Call was was the great monster, literally described as the great monster yep. that would just shove horrible like fucking organs into his body and yeah. Um, just flat out awful, awful stuff. And, and Call has no regrets. He's just like, what? I did what I had to do so you could be strong. You should be thanking me. I did I did you a solid. Come on, buddy. Bring it in. Bring it in. Hug it out. Come on. Bring it in. That, that's it's the like, funny hello? part is that Call actually like, gives a shit. Yeah. Like, like, he cares about Felix to an extent, 100%. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, I liked that stuff. Like, when, when Felix was having his flashbacks and it was, like, looking at these just awful things that him as a child went through yeah that was like okay now i'm getting i'm getting like some master chief kind of stuff mm-hmm. you know like like the the horrible things in the in the childhood kind of like i'm I'm starting to appreciate it a bit more um call is totally the highlight of this book though i fucking love call man oh 100 percent. like a- as as he should be since the book is named after him he is absolutely the star of the show the highlight the the thing that you show up for like it's nice that decimus is there it's nice that we get some of the primaris marines uh, emperor size or kind of whatever but call is one million percent the star of the show and the reason this book works right so what was the first primaris's uh, name the one that's uh, basically his servant and is stronger alpha primus. Than all the other it's literally primus oh my alpha God. primus alpha primus yeah Alpha Primus was the the early, 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 early Primaris Marine that is also a psyker and can hide his psychic power, but he is in never-ending torment yep. because of Call's, um, you know, Call haphazard creation. Yeah, he tried to do too much, he tried to reach too far, and now Alpha Primaris knows nothing but suffering, even though he's so much stronger than all the other Primaris Marines. It is a double-edged sword, and he is just tormented endlessly with every breath. It is it is interesting because, like, okay, so I told you this earlier, and I'm sad you haven't played it. Uh, Shy, have you played the Old World Blues DLC in Fallout New Vegas? Okay, the audiobook. I, I need to. I don't. I need to look this up because he sounds. His call voice is identical. <laughs> to like Doctor um, Mobius or whatever, or no, yeah, he, he has this like, well, Friedish, I see that you and your friends <laughs> have brought this science, and I am here to to assist in the holy order of the cult mechanicus, and and mm-hmm. bring me my good guns, Alpha Primus. There is much to learn in the way of science. Also, that's that. There it is. Shy has it. Listen to that shit. Oh, okay. Let me let me let me let me see. Well, there's many things they have forgotten sitting in their bowls. Friendship, the thrill of discovery, love, masturbation, the usual. Ooh, boy, that is close. The, I, I can tell you they're not the same person because Mobius has sort of that, um... Well, well After wait, some dude. of the words, like, there's an old man growl, but, dude, that is really close. Dude, there's... They're voice actors. They can have a, a range. I guess that's true. It's just, I don't know. Sorry, jeez. But yes, it is. Y- yes. I, it it's would not very surprise close. me if they were the same person. Dr. Mobius. Dr. Love, Mobius. I, I absolutely love that DLC. It's so fun. Um, but That is uh, real close. Holy jeez. Ah, Shy says it's not the same guy. Damn. All right, it's fine. They're close. It's still... you're, you're you're not crazy for thinking that they might be the same person, though. Any anyway, yes, he is extremely like. Well, f- well, come on, Friedish, don't be so frightened. It's time for the Imperium. It, it, mm. It's so common. Yeah. Oh, I remember. Poor Friedish. Oh boy! Yeah, Friedrich had a bad life, man. Oh man, being called being called's best friend did not turn out great for Friedrich. Oh man, 
I, I've, uh, I understand Call didn't want him to die. Like, I get that part. But he basically just servitorized the man. He turned him into, a, like, a Skatari, basically. Yeah, he did. Uh, as he was dying after he got shot, he... What, what, what was the thing he was looking for? The, um... I don't know, it was like a... I always thought it was like a USB port that he just... Boom, and he oh. extracted what he could, and he put it into, like, uh, whatever that... KW whatever drone. Was. Uh, yeah, like a yeah Q QW or or yeah the his, his acolyte. Yeah, yeah, because at the very end of the book, he's, he keeps calling him Friedish, and the and the and the acolyte's like, um, I'm KW. My name's not Friedish, and and Call just like oh, I know. I, but that's the thing, though, is like he knows. But the re but the reason is like you think that he's just confused because of the memory uh loop of the mm -hmm. device. Yeah. But in reality, like, mm -hmm. no, he's actually we know like, why Friedish. he's confused. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, so the book is pretty good. I, I, I do think the audiobook is the weaker variant to listen slash read it to. Um, mm, I would imagine the same. I would imagine reading it is just a much more focused experience. I think it would also make a very good miniseries compared to other forty k books. I think the back oh, and yeah. forth flashbacks would actually do quite well in that situation. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Where it's just very obvious when it is present time and not yeah um, and, and like would... for like the first episode you could kind of explain like why primaris space marines are so special comparatively speaking to a normal space marine and then just go from there because that's really like the only background info you need it's like oh there's the imperium there's the emperor here are space marines oh look at the crazy stuff that calls doing and then you can just yeah I do think that if you are a fan of the Primaris Space Marines because you're like an old boomer 40k fan or something and you just don't like the new stuff, I think you get a better appreciation for for it with this game. Oh, game, yeah. Book. Yeah, yeah. Um, definitely a lot more, I, I'd argue. Yeah. Because, like, I, I feel like it's, it's weird. In 40k, if something seems too overpowered and is constantly winning, it becomes very boring. I guess that's the same way with, like, anything. Like, if a sports team wins too much, everybody hates them. Like, nobody wants to see someone constantly win. So, like, when you see that thing have trouble and strife and have to struggle and they don't just insta-win... Like, you appreciate them more because you see the sacrifices that they have to go through and you see the trials and then the tribulations. And so, may yeah, I, yeah, yeah. And that's that's kind of why I like the Ultramarines a lot more now, too, is because, like, they don't always just blueberry win. Boy Scout looks in handbook and wins. Uh, so, yeah, I... Uh, yeah, and these are all Ultramarine successors, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, Decimus is, right? He's... Uh, the size he... of the Emperor are all, I think, 13th Legion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know Desmus was given his post specifically by Gilliman, right? And that's why he's on... Oh, shit. What the fuck was the planet called? S Sotha. Sotha. So why was I thinking Vespa? They both have an uh. I don't know. Maybe. But yeah, yeah. Because he was checking it out because it had been uh, overrun by Tyranids. Yeah. So, that yeah. Because it was eaten alive by the, by the Nids in classic mm -hmm. Nid faction, fashion. Boy, they um, messed up that space station. They... Absolutely did. <laughs> Literal gaps in the walls. Just like, oh, okay, okay, okay. It shows off how insane insane a gene stealer is with their, oh, yeah. their scalpel-like um, sores that just clean cut through a Space Marine's chest armor. Yeah, that gene stealer cults are wild. Especially yeah, if they're a figment of your imagination. Even more so. Yeah. Um... So I guess it really comes down to like I think this book is really good if you were someone who liked your you you want some lore reveals. Oh hell yeah. You you want this some is an lore amazing book if you want lore reveals. Uh or you just want to understand things a little bit more in terms of the actual like 40k world with call. Because mm -hmm. call so so we know that call is over 10,000 years old. Yeah. He is Two personalities somewhat attempted to be mixed together. Yeah, that's that's like one of the big reveals is that uh, Call was taken basically prisoner by Ezekiel Zidane. 
mm-hmm. because Zidane was running out of time to live because <laughs> in typical 40K fashion, they genocided an entire race because they realized that race could be melted down to give them extra long life. Uh, Hell was, yeah. Yeah, typical 40K stuff. He was running out of that, and he's like, hey, guess what, Call, I'm going to take over your body, and you're just going to be a whisper in my brain. And uh, so he, he shoots Friedish to make Call go through with the little blah, 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 blah. And uh, turns out you can't dominate Call, and Call takes over. And now Call's got like 20 billion years of knowledge and experience alongside with his weird, kooky persona. Yeah, it's like Persona Swap along with the rest. And and yeah. Call at the time worked like he worked way back when, like with um what's her buckets? Uh the Astartes lady. <laughs> what's her buckets? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know I don't know her like first name is like it's something Astartes. Yeah. Like, I just like wor- the idea of calling an Astartes what's her bucket. Yeah, well, her no, her no, her name the star like the the the, the scientist lady, mm. I don't Amara know. Stardy, right? Oh, really? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. She oh, was that's mentioned. right. They did mention that, and that's why they're called a star. Oh, that's right. Because also, 40K yeah, has the worst the, naming schemes. They also mentioned the Harkin Land in the beginning too. Oh, that's they did. That's right, Land. Raider Land. Ra- That's yeah. right. That's funny because Harkin Land was very mad about the name. He's like, <laughs> yeah, "That's he so it. stupid." <laughs> he hated that. I feel like the author was having some fun with that. I think he, he knew, was, yeah. you know. Um, but yeah, so so Call doesn't remember everything, and that's the problem. Is he has to like purge his data banks every five hundred years or so, yeah. um, and like siphon it away. But so he doesn't remember everything, but. Call as a personality took over, but he has like the genius of Zidane, mm-hmm. but he also has like the gestalt conscious like like I, but he 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 picks out a personality like a fucking outfit. Yeah, that reminded me so much of the Necron books, where like you, you got all the personalities swimming around inside of you, like the. What was it? The- oh, that was just Ultix. Yeah, I know that was just Ultix, but it just kind of reminded me of like the way Ultix had those multiple personalities swimming around inside of him. It kind of reminded me of um this whole thing where it's like he picked uh uh you know the way he wanted to be based on whatever. Uh yeah, it, it was really just him like which which personality matrix am I picking today? I'm gonna pick these three, which is his most favorite and his special guns <laughs> yeah. that he likes, mm-hmm. and, and, he and all that kind the of same stuff. ones. Yep. And so it's that's like the big kind of like oh my god, call is old and Gil- Gilliman Gilliman Gilliman. I, lo- I love Gilliman because he's just so like I'll give this to you, call because I really don't have a better option here. Um, <laughs> if I, I had I like, one, I would take it. You're your last resort, dude. That's that's it. I lo- I love when they go to the Necron tech, and he's like, "Oh, this this it'll turn our weapons into something so much more powerful." And one of the space marines is like, "So the aliens have stronger power than humanity? Isn't that against your religion?" And he's like, "Oh yeah." <laughs> he, yeah, there's so many times where Call will just chuckle and say something super heretical, and everybody just like, "Uh, what?" And he just kind of laughs it off, like. Ah. Yeah, you can't like, touch me. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, oh, 100%. But, like, you know, it doesn't change the truth. Mm-hmm. And it's like when they were um, in the mountain, right? And one of them is like, you know, if this turns out to be a tomb world, we're going to blow this place to smithereens. And Kyle's just like, oh, t- don't worry. This is way worse. And it's, yeah, like, it's like, yeah, um, this isn't a tomb world. This is way worse than a tomb world. <laughs> it's like, wait, what? And then, well, immediately once he said, oh, yeah, this is way worse than a tomb world. I'm like, there's a shard in here, isn't there? Yeah, I one is I was like weird, weird shenanigans happening. Mm-hmm. And then and then like uh, not tomb world. This is definitely a neck uh, a tesseract vault or some kind yeah, of vault. there has to like there's a Catan shard powering this mountain. It's gone haywire. We're going to see a star god, aren't we? And it's like, oh, what do you know? There's the star god. <laughs> yep. I, w- I, was, I found the Catan stuff to be the least interesting part of the whole book. Yeah, it felt like they needed to shoehorn in an actual villain. And so they were just like, well, 
uh, the Necron. This is a this is a Blackstone Mountain. It's Necron. Who did the Necrons hate? Catan. Let's have a Catan in there. And man, the reveal of that Catan and the way it acted was just so like it didn't it didn't do it for me. No. I don't know about you, but it did not. He seemed like such a naive little bitch. He 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 really did. Like like I know Katarn think they're the greatest thing in the world, but he mm-hmm. specifically thought like himself so above that he got tricked by call. Yeah. Like through words practically through words. and got teleport and got teleported to the other side of the galaxy. Yeah, it was it, so strange. Like what? Like, like this com- is comparing, a star god. Like comparing this Okay, so one, I am I am happy that, that, that there's a totally different Katan out there. What was his name like, Zen, Zandresh or something? I don't remember. I just remember he well, he was like, I am the master of all things physical and mental. Gravity cannot harm me. Right, Z- Zarhulash the potentant, po- po- potentate, fucking whatever. Potentate. Zar- potentate. All right, um, oh my god, uh, Hash, Mister Hash. <laughs> Um, yeah, he he was so like compare him to the Deceiver in oh. Infinite Divine, who was so much better. So much the Deceiver was such, and like you see them for right around the same amount of time, and the Deceiver comes across so much better than Zarhu Lash, who's just like yeah, you're a you're a baby bitch, like you're a naive little man child, like you're nothing. Yeah, he he was genuinely an uninteresting part of it, and it actually kind of made me like he was. Remind me, it was, he was getting their memories to like learn about them, right? I don't remember. Like, I just remember that he was powering the mountain, and the mountain made you not necessarily see your past, but it made you literally relive them. Um. But yeah, that's that's kind of what I remember about the mountain. And I mean, to be fair, Zarhu, Z- Zaharlash is in a weakened state, but still. Yeah, no, I I don't I don't much like the whole Catan thing. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I remember like I was I looked up I wanted to look up and see if there was a picture of Zaharlash because I wanted to see what he looked like, and I didn't find one. But I found like I guess it was like a summary on one of the wikis. And it specifically said that, like, Call teleported him uh, across the... He tricked him because he's like, oh, you're going to starve if you don't eat that star and you can't do anything to me, blah, blah, blah. And they said that he specifically teleported Zaharlash to, like, a star that was surrounded by hostile tomb worlds. And I didn't yeah. see that anywhere in the book. Did I miss that? Maybe. I think maybe they said, like, he was teleported to X part of space. And maybe oh. if you just know what that part of space is, it happens you to be know like that the Necron territory. By, okay, yeah, yeah. Because I didn't see that, and I was like, that seems like... Because that would make it even more of a big brain move by Call if Call was like, yeah, guess what? Not only do you have to go eat that star, you're also surrounded by the people you hate and the people that can, like, chain you back down. Yeah, which... Yeah, I think the... Because the whole, like, everyone seeing each other's memories and stuff really had me hooked. I was like, this is so weird. It's obviously Necron tech, but why is it doing this? Why This is so bizarre. And knowing it's just the machinations of another Catan is just kind of meh. Yeah, it is very meh. Although there was there was another uh, big reveal that we haven't talked about. Uh, um, which one? Uh, well, why the book's called The Great Work. Ooh, there's actually a few reasons why it's called The Great Work. Well... <laughs> the wasn't didn't call wasn't he like oh yeah I I want to basically take the technology that was on Cadia that was keeping uh, the eye of, pylons yeah the pylons he wanted to take that but he wanted to make it on like a super ultra large scale so that oh, it could, like oh. actually close the cicatrix maledictum that's not really an, a reveal I don't think it's more just it's like not I mean I wouldn't call it a a reveal well, that was news like, to me. Oh, okay, so yes, sure. So, so Call's end goal is to utilize the black stone that the Necrons have in mm-hmm. this world and create a warp, like um, redu- uh, resistant whatever pylons like the Necrons and seal off the Eye of Terror. Yeah. Yes, yeah. but I mean, like that just sounds like his goal. I, I don't know. Like it is his great work. Yes, that's the reason he's there. But it's not like oh. 
I don't know. He says the it, it's not really revealed. Well, it happens he, like three hours into the book. Well, that well, I guess that's true. But like he specifically was like, "Oh yeah, that's my great work." I was like, "Oh, title drop, boom boom, let's go, boom boom boom, big reveal, boom 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 boom, boom. you know, do do all the horn things, shy with the editing, and the you're really good at that. So just make it sound cool. Now it's just gonna be a bunch of farts. <laughs> but yeah, that was like a big. That I thought that was like such a big deal, and it's not. I, I, I'm, I mean, I I don't really think it was. Oh well, I, I, I mean, you're, you're the expert. Not... So if it's not a big deal to you, then I was just overreacting. No, I mean, I guess if you want to know about what Call wants to do, then yes, it's it's a it's a reveal. Like, oh, this is what Call's planning on doing. Holy shit! Like, sure, sure. But I don't think like when I think no. of a reveal, I think of like either a twist or some like revel that makes you go back and think like twice about what's going on with the rest of the book. Okay. For me, this is just this is just why the book is called the Great Work. Okay. Um, which I mean, at the end, he I think he finds like doesn't he find like, the map to like. 10 million locations that have Blackstone in it or something. Yeah, well, that's what he was after in the mountain, right? That's the thing he wanted to retrieve was a map of all of the uh, Blackstone fortresses that he could go and pillage and stuff. Why didn't he just pillage the mountain? Because the mountain's made out of Blackstone, right? Like, why wasn't he as keen to just harvest the mountain? Weren't there eight coffins down there? So wouldn't there be eight shards? That's true. There were a lot of coffins down there besides Zahulash's. Yeah, so I'm not sure if I would if I would fuck with that much. Also, um, I'm assuming he needs far more than one mountain. Well, true, but like, why not harvest the all you can from the mountain and then move on to like a fortress? Oh, I it's still know. resources, right? I mean, sure, but it's not like call. I mean, if he did, then I'm assuming that would happen after the end of the book. It's like he just true does it now or something. It wasn't there a part in the book where he was, I don't know, maybe I'm mistaken. Because like I said, it's been a hot minute since I read it. But I could have sworn there was a point where he was like, oh, no, yeah, Blackstone Mountain. Oh, I don't I don't need to harvest this. No, 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 no. It was weird. No, I don't remember that part. But I do know that, yeah, his main goal is to create the pylons. And yeah, and close the Cicatrix Maledictum. Cicatrix Maledictum. And, it's such a uh, fun name to say, Cicatrix Maledictum. It is a fun name, but I mean, it, it's a good, it's a good concept. And, you know, like Gil, Gilliman, Gilliman gave him the last remaining information out there on how to create the Primarchs, which is. Oh, that's wild. Which is wild. To that me. is great. That is to give to someone like call is like, bruh. It's a little, it's a little bruh. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a little surprised. unsure. Bruh. Little unsure about how I feel about that right there. Yeah, that's that's a big deal. Can you imagine but, if Call actually could replicate a warrior that was like Primarch level? Ooh. I mean that 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 would be. I th I think Alpha Primus was his attempt. Oh sure, that that but, might be his attempt at making a Primarch. Yeah, I'm pretty positive that also um, Gilliman was like, "Hey, no." Not again. <laughs> Didn't they might have said that someone was like, "Hey, hey, maybe tone it down." We, mm, 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 mm. Which actually, speaking of, um, I'm thinking a little bit about the whole, mm, like, Gilliman creating like Primark stuff and all that things, and I want. Having the old material on how to make Primark stuff it could definitely have helped him figure out the whole Primaris thing, hence the name of it. But Yeah, definitely. That surely that must have played a part in him making the Primaris Space Marines, right? It's it's in the name, right? Yeah. I pro most likely. Um Well I, Shy's right, Bio clone the Yeah, there have been a couple of Primark clones, right? Like oh, there was um, second Horus. Yeah. yeah, Horus was cloned and wasn't um Fulgrim cloned a couple times or something? Once. Bile Once. cloned Fulgrim, and then, um, true. Though, you say he cloned Primarchs with no issues. We're not 100% on the no issues part. I don't think we have yeah. enough. Hor uh, Horus clone died immediately, and and Fulgrim clone is it got given to Trazen. Um, so I'm not sure if they're like... <laughs> That's I, right, I, I, the poor clone is sitting in Fulgrim's, or in, in Trazen's vault, isn't he? Yeah, I'm a little unsure how I feel about the whole no issues, but we haven't had enough time to see if there are issues. Also, there's there's a bit of a difference between cloning a Primarch with, like, say, their DNA versus taking a warrior, like a Space Marine, and just 
giving it like Primarch powers, essentially, right? Because that's essentially what Alpha Primaris is. It's like a warrior, and he was like, okay, let me tinker around with your insides, give you new organs, give you psychic abilities, right? So it's not quite the same technically as cloning, I guess. Because cloning, you're just taking the DNA and just like, well, let's regrow this. And I know it's not that simple, but it's 40k. So it's it's a, ever so slightly different, right? I, it's, I think it's significantly different. I, I'm not sure the whole, the whole sh- the shtick with it, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's significantly different. Yeah, still, if you can clone a Primarch, you know, you would think you'd be able to figure out how to, I don't know. How to what? I, I get where Shy's coming from, where it's like, if you can clone a Primarch, why can't you just give a Primera Space Marine Primarch powers, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's a possibility. I, I, I don't so, know. So, yeah, I, I, I get where Shy's coming from, but, you know. There's questions. Yeah, lots. Of, it's 40k. There's always questions. But um, but yeah, I mean, book is book is pretty all right. Not my hundred percent favorite. Took a little bit for me to get into it, and mm-hmm. there's also the problem with the audiobook variation of it. But yeah, I think it's pretty okay. Not not quite as amazing as uh, as I was told it would be, or as insanity. But it's um, I I mean, it's it's still perfectly solid. What would you give it out of ten? Uh, seven. That is exactly where I was sitting. I was yeah. like, seven? I was like, ah. a part of me was like, maybe 7.5, but I was like, that's, no. I wouldn't lean that close to an eight. It's definitely a solid seven. Yeah. Good lore reveals. There was some good action. Uh, the the tent shifting definitely is a little confusing and weird, and the Catan thing felt shoehorned in. But overall, yeah, solid seven. Yeah, so I th- I think seven is is decently decently well enough into it. I uh, yeah. you know above average, not definitely like a, a C, definitely a C. worth the read. If you are into like forty k lore, I think this is probably something you want to pick up. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of reveals in this, and it's it's nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, well, that's about it. Yeah, good book. Um, yeah, good book. Oh, hey, hey, what do we have any idea what we're doing next time? Nope. 